set close to uh, the media briefing inside. And, uh, and the type of a caliber that is going to be serving with integrity, commitment, and then their performance while in office. So that is one of the big issues. And secondly, that will then come up with a clear accountability framework for cadres operating in the state, which will then be guiding the accountability and ensuring that those who are deploying indeed delivers on the mandate of the organization, but also uh, hold that office with respect and integrity. Then we also looked at the issues of the amendment of the ANC constitution around the 50% gender representation in public office, but also there's a proposal by the ANC Youth League of a 40% representation in the elected positions in the organization and also in deployment positions such as public representative space. We are saying to this issue, we agree to it in principle, however the merits in terms of what and where are those issues will then be still be engaged with the ANC with League. And the other issues that we then also said that in the retention of the people who are representing the ANC in public representative uh, capacity, 60% of continuity ought to be emphasized so that we, not every election we lose the talent and the investment that we have had as an organization and then simply because of the electoral processes. Hence the proposal for the ANC to establish an electoral commission uh, so that those who want to stand for any position in the ANC will then have to go through that particular electoral commission who they stand for, their capabilities, their capacity, be looked at and ensure that they are of merit to be representing the organization and, uh, and, and in the quality and the integrity thereof. So those are the issues that we looked under the consolidation of the state power. On the issue of the professionalization of the, and the capacity of the uh, modern political party, I think that issue also has been resolved and then agreed to so that the ANC can now begin to modernize itself so that it's an ANC that is leading government, that is leading society, and how it then begin to approach issues of integrity and capacity will then be looking at that particular issue. The second issue that we dealt with was on the issue of the macro configuration of government. On it, we have just one point that we're going to be on the cooperative governing legislation. The cooperative governance legislation around the issues of the state macro policy and planning, the budget and resource allocation and prioritization, cooperative governance, public service, and performance monitoring evaluation are they going to be the models that we are going to be looking at. And, and in that particular regard, we'll then have to come up with legislation that is going to redo things in a particular way so that we could then begin to maximally achieve the objectives each time we take resolutions, those resolutions must be fast-tracked, be implemented, and be prioritized, and then resources such as budget and others be allocated so that resolutions don't hang and after taking resolutions in the party itself. Then the other issue that uh, we are also going to be looking at the capability and capacity of government is the transformation and modernization of the public administration, and in particularly the National School of Government to play a central and coordinating role in the capacity of the employees in all spheres of government in order to achieve the objectives of the National Democratic Revolution and that the Office of Standards and Compliance should be established to oversee the implementation of uniform and standards in public administration in all three spheres. When you go into hospital, when you go to municipal office, when you go to home affairs, the standard must be the same across all government services so that people, when they go in there, they go there with hope that their issues are going to be resolved and then indeed uh, followed up and implemented. On the issue of government planning and implementation and performance, we are proposing uh, and resolve that the Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation should also now begin to be strengthening to ensure that national policy and planning powers and functions are more focusing on macro policy coherence and planning, policy impact assessment, the resource prioritization, and that therefore it ought to be strengthened so that then planning across and then in the achievement of the national development plan can then be directed. And the local government independent uh, uh, IDPs processes also to be linked 
into that cycle of budgeting planning so that when they go into the IDPs, it's not just an exercise of consulting, but all those issues that arises will go into the province, they'll also go into the national sphere, across all departments, but coordinated by the Department of Planning and Monitoring, so that we could then have one seamless, cohesive uh, planning and implementation strategy on those issues. Managing municipal space for radical socio-economic transformation, we are proposing that the integrated urban development framework must be used now, now that we have adopted it as government, to reverse the apartheid special planning patterns and ensure that there is resilience and quality of human settlement and sustainable and efficiency within the system itself. That will identify top 100 urban settlements as well as their rural hinterlands. That must be prioritized to achieve the goals of integration, inclusion, and economic growth, thereby creating a more equitable uh, special economy, de-racializing communities, so that the building of one South Africa can be achieved just by special planning itself. On the issues of the legislature, the issue of strengthening the NCOP, National Council of Provinces, came very strongly, but also the representation by SALGA, the National House of Traditional Leaders, to be considered, and that was resolved that it will have to go through the whatever formal processes that ought to happen in Parliament, so that they have representation that is formal and formalized within the space of the NCOP. Then the other issue is that the creation of the Speaker of Parliament be considered after analyzing and studying the comprehensive research that Parliament concluded on it, and then if indeed that uh, suggestions and proposals uh, are of effect, we'll then have to amend the constitution to ensure that we create that particular speaker of parliament and the institutional arrangements thereof. That the majority of the party chief whip in parliament should be accorded the necessary political and institutional recognition as chief of parliament, because currently the type of the chief uh, whip system is the chief whip of a party, and we don't have a chief whip of the national assembly or a chief whip of the parliament, and it's only the NCOP that has an institutional uh, arrangement. And then that also ANC public representative must assist to regain the confidence of our people in run-up to 2019 elections, and that the caucus must be at the forefront of championing the needs of the people and rebuilding the trust and confidence, going out and working in the constituency offices, linking up and working within communities, and ensuring therefore that we are able then to to achieve that particular goal. Institution supporting democracy. Here we are seeing the actual committee on the report on the ISDs, which was, was known as the Asmal report, must be expired and then be implemented and all the rationalization that it has proposed and then introduced on the state, uh, uh, on in the institution supporting democracy be achieved. On governance of the SOE, we are then saying that a multiple of the SOE exist in our society, including those in the municipalities. The ANC must focus on the mandate of the, of the SOEs and make necessary inputs and policy guidelines to the presidential SOE council, and also to ensure, therefore, that that presidential review committee uh, outcomes be looked at and be implemented, and to then begin to deal with the issues of corruption and then repositioning the SOEs as the caster's list of socio-economic transformation. On local government, with ANCs, we have resolved that the ANC deployment to local government may ensure the right of capabilities exist. We have to scrutinize the people that are sending there as representatives, their capacity and their capabilities, and then to ensure that the 60% retention, as Ella indicated, uh, be, be, be achieved. And council assessments be done regularly so that those who do not perform can then be removed, and so that then those who can then come in and really perform can then be, 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 be looked at. And the issues of full-time council and uh, uh, part-time councils be looked at as a formula so that we could then begin to see if a half of them or a quarter of them can be not only those in the executive, because currently the model is those who are in the executive and the rest of others, they are part-time, and, and then you find that legislative matters and consultation with the people and participation in uh, democracy is compromised. We are also want to affirm the electricity reticulation and distribution as a municipal function to be asserted 
because the Constitution says so, and we'll have to engage on the issues until we're able then to, to achieve it. On the equitable share system on the intergovernmental grants will be re restructured, take into account the changing settlement patterns, poverty, topographic capabilities, and other contexts, and the movement of people from one area to the other, so that uh, money follows the people. Uh, then on demarcation, that demarcations be done every, in a 10-year cycle uh, uh, and following up on the national consensus. Once the national census has been done, then they will be studied, looked at them, and then that will then inform the type of the demarcation that ought to happen. No longer this every five years, which has in some instances disrupted certain uh, settlements and then the way people then relate to their settlements that they have. That the restructuring of the municipal demarcation board be looked at, and the ANC must then develop its internal capacity to ensure that. Uh, and the last one is on traditional leadership. We are saying that the issue of the spluma, which has been raised by the traditional leaders, uh, should then be looked at the, the section 10 of the act itself, where provinces' legislation should then be developed to take local dynamics. And then, and then so that then it can then begin to deal with those particular issues that traditional leaders are raising. That the relationship between local government and traditional authorities be reviewed and relooked at. And lastly, that the land, the 13% land that is uh, in the custodian of traditional leaders and the traditional authorities, that belongs to the people who live in those, registered as belonging to those people, that land be transferred to them as a 13% land parcel in South Africa, so that it could then be in the ownership, but obviously following the special plannings that are there, the integrated urban development, and other laws that are there, so that then we can then build a South Africa that is seamless in terms of where people want to settle, so that the rural areas could then be upgraded, but also the issues of ownership of land and pride can be restored. I think those are just in summary some of the issues that have been resolved. That note, on that note of removal, people who are not working. Uh, Adrian, Maria, okay. That's all. Thank you, Minister Bapela. Um, you spoke about corruption concerns at the SOEs. Has the ANC taken, no taken note of the Gupta leaks, which has been in the public domain since April this year, which has revealed in quite a number of detail the depth and the level of corruption uh, that's been going on at our SOE, specifically Transnet, ESCOM and Denal, uh, the fact that sophisticated consultancy uh, arrangements involving the Gupta family has circumvented those SOEs, and how do you plan to deal with this, to clean up the SOEs? Thank you. Hi, Marion Merton, Daily Maverick. Um, could you give us some more clarification in terms of the reasoning and the rationale behind uh, giving formal recognition to Salga and uh, the National House of Traditional Leaders in the NCOP that would effectively, to quote your policy document, make Salga an 11th, a 10th province and the National House of Traditional Leaders possibly an 11th province? Um, what did the Commission decide formal recognition because Salga already has formal recognition in the NCOP. So some, some more insight into the discussion and the rationale which are quite significantly going to change the makeup of the NCOP and will also require constitutional amendments. With regards to Spluma, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm a little tired and maybe um, you were talking a little fast for me. Um, did I understand you correctly that there was an agreement on uh, transferring the land into the ownership of traditional leaders to give effect to, uh, to, 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 to overcome some of the issues that traditional leaders have had with the Spluma legislation. If you could just clarify me on that. Thank you very much. No, right behind you. Um, hi, Janusha Phillips, Akaya. I'd like to know what the ANC is going to do about accusations from opposition parties and certain communities that the demarcation process is actually used to give the ruling party leverage 
during local government elections um, and how you would sort of mitigate that influence of the demarcation board. Where is Professor Boise? And uh, Professor Mukalisi uh, Mlechana is here. I love it, I love it. Okay, Tabo. Thanks very much. Tabo Sholamashop from Khao TV. On the issue of um, a single election, I am quite aware of what you had resolved, but you had said that it would be open up for reviewal if needs be. I wanted to find out from you, Minister, what were some of the deliberations around that on, on, on the issue of uh, single elections. Uh, and the second one, the issue of gender mainstreaming. In uh, the previous report, it is very clear that the progress has been slow of uh, gender equity in the private sector. Did the Commission deliberate about, on that and what were some of the resolutions to speed up uh, gender e equality in terms of employment in the uh, public sector? Thanks. Jacob from report, uh, did anybody bring up uh, perhaps a possible relook into the country's election system? Did you get the question? Those are the only hands, uh, comrades. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm partially covered, thanks, but uh, I just want you to uh, spell out the uh, thinking behind the Parliament, uh, Speaker of Parliament uh, and a Chief Whip of Parliament. I assume that that would be over both houses. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just some clarification around the Carter Osmo report into uh, Chapter 9 institutions. If you can just elaborate on that. It's been gathering dust on, uh, on, the sh on shelves for a number of years. What's the idea and the motivation and what, what's, uh, what's the immediate plans? Thank you. Yamala Sensei. Jan Gerber, News 24. Um, I want to know about, um, did you discuss the mandate of ANC? Can you speak to the mic, please? Um, Jan Gerber, News 24. Did you discuss the mandate of ANC MPs in Parliament, specifically with regards to over the oversight role? Because it seems there's in some committees they're doing great work, in other committees not so much. And yeah, if not, why not? What is the plan going forward with oversight in Parliament? Thanks. The, the last question is either you, I think there's a problem, but none of us could hear you. Genevieve, you want to repeat the last question? You want to repeat for us the last question? No, I've got a different question. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know if I missed it, but was the um, centralization of the powers in the presidency discussed at all? I think it had to do with allocation of resources, etc. It was um, discussed at policy conference. Uh, it's, uh, you say centralization of power? Presidency. Yeah. Presidency. May you re please repeat your, your question, sir? Yeah, um, I want to know about the oversight role of ANC in in Parliament. What, what is their mandate? What, what are the expectations of them? Because in some cases they're doing great work, in other cases they're not doing great work. Thank you. Comrades, are there any questions? I'll deal with two and the rest of others because I spoke so much I'll leave to my two colleagues here. Uh, on the issue of Spluma, at least the view has now changed from the traditional leaders that they are no longer totally rejecting Spluma. They say on the spatial planning side of the Spluma, they are happy, they are fine with it. It is only on the land use where they feel that their role has been diminished and then those powers have been given to the officials in land affairs and, and so forth. And therefore, that is the area that we then say that provinces in the enacting of the provincial legislation, because Pluma is a framework and to guide provinces to develop a legislation. In the development of that legislation, provinces must then begin to then take care of the land use because most of the land in the rural area is, un, is the communal land under the custodian of the traditional leadership. And that area ought to be marshaled 
take into cognizance local dynamics and then so forth. Uh, and then on the issue of the 13% land, the 13% land belongs to the communities under the leadership of the traditional leaders. It doesn't belong to the traditional leaders. In South Africa, that's how the land ownership has been. However, the, the state is holding the land in trust and then the traditional leaders are just managing. So the issue here is that they then are requesting through the communities themselves that using whatever existing legislations and laws, can this land be transferred back to them? Because when the land uh, was taken away, Africans were left only on that 13% land, and they say it's not disputed, it's what was remained out of all the land that they used to own, 13%. And they say because this land is not under any dispute and is also registered under the communities, and when you go to those areas, you'll find that the, every piece of land is registered under a particular name. The name of the traditional leader in some instances, the name of a particular tribe or grouping and so forth. All those things, because they are registered land, can they then be transferred to them to have com community title deed? And then with that community title deed, we are then saying that it is doable and then only if it's going to be done legally. But secondly, when we do it, there will be conditionalities. The security of tenure for those people who are living in those part on that land ought to be an effective element because we now live in a constitutional democracy and they ought really indeed to enjoy all the rights that all South Africans enjoy. So that will be one of the conditionalities. Secondly, the form of title deed, obviously, they will then decide as communities. Is it a title deed as loaner or is it a, a lease hold? That will then be dependent on every community to take a decision at the point of the transfer. And also the use of the land agreements will also have to come in. Training will have to be looked at it also so that we don't just transfer the land and the land remains idle and is not in production and so forth. So all care, but it will be owned collectively, not by any individual. The traditional leaders are just a custodian. The traditional authority or traditional council will be the center of administration of that particular land. And I think that's how we're looking at it and we resolved on. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Comrade Tobit, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'll, I'll avoid talking about local government. Um, with regards to consolidation of power in the presidency, what we have said is that the presidency remains the strategic center of power. But in executing that responsibility and improving coordination of governance, there are a number of functions that need to be located in the center. And these would include state macro policy and planning, budget, res budget and resource allocation and prioritization, cooperative governance, public services, and performance monitoring and evaluation. Now, as conference, we make a resolution that this is what needs to be done. What government then has to do is to say, how do we then reconfigure the functioning of the state? It could imply that you are setting, yeah, that you are relocating for purposes of coordination, certain ministries to be coordinated directly in the presidency or it could imply that in certain instances it is about relocating certain functions. So we did not go to the nitty gritty about um, this means that this ministry would be in the presidency, this ministry would be, would be in the presidency, and this function would be executed by the president. It is the principle about government coordination and ensuring that the strategic center uh, is able to hold and it's able to coordinate overall functions of government. With regards to matters of mandates and responsibilities of MPs, MPLs and in fact 
councillors across the board, so public representatives across the board, which is also a matter related to the conversation around uh, probity, governance, and corruption in SOEs. We have said that the incoming National Executive Committee should develop an accountability framework for deployees of the ANC in government so that people are held to account to their specific responsibilities as assigned. So if you think about it from a governance point of view and you say this is an SOE, there is a minister who's the executive authority over that SOE, they have a particular responsibility of executing their mandates within the context of an accountability framework. We would then look at how are they executing the developmental mandate of that SOE? How are they executing the governance mandate of that SOE and governance systems in that SOE? And how do they ensure that we get maximum output from the functions that they've been assigned? So in essence, what we do is we hold the political and executive authority accountable for ensuring that governance is taking place in an, in an appropriate way in that state-owned enterprise. Because all SOEs have executive authorities, which are the ministers. So the starting point is to have an accountability framework that holds those to account. The same applies to all public representatives of the ANC in relation to, the, to their performance, whether as MPs or in certain committees. We need to ensure that there's an objective way in, the, in which this is done, in which this is reviewed, uh, and decisions are made. And that's why we've resolved on this accountability framework. De demarcation, one of the reasons we've resolved that, in fact, demarcation must be in line with the national census is to create a sense of objectivity because you would say this is a particular criteria that enables you to make decisions around demarcation of boundaries. But you give yourself 10 years to be able to incorporate the census information uh, in terms of demographic trends to be able to make decisions around demarcation. So you reduce the propensity and or possibility of um, subjectivity in making that decision because one of the key considerations already is that you would have applied your mind to the demographic trends in the country and that's why you're using the census as the basis on which you would review demarcation. So I, I think that deals with, with that particular issue. Um, I, I think uh, everything else might also include local government, but also the other issues. Thank you very much, um, Comrade Parks. The, I think the, there were questions on, the, on single elections and the electoral system. In the past, the question of a single election, and just by that, to, to, to clarify what is meant is having national, provincial, and local government elections all on the, the same day. That has been discussed in the past, and the previous conferences have decided against that. The matter didn't come up again, um, at least in our commission, um, but certainly we've, uh, we've taken the view that we would continue assessing that from, from time to time. There would certainly be certain benefits to have to consolidate elections, saving costs. On the other hand, one has to bear in mind that very often those elections address different issues and one would want in the interests of, of deepening and strengthening your democracy to keep those elections separate uh, to allow people maximum input uh, in, in affecting issues uh, that, that to have a direct impact on their lives. With regard to the electoral uh, system, um, we took the view that the existing system should be maintained, uh, i.e. that at a national level and, and a provincial level we have proportional representation, at local government a mix. Certainly also we, we would be open to reviewing that on an ongoing basis. Um, with regard to, to Parliament, 
the argument for the creation of a Speaker of Parliament is to say that we have two houses, the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces. There's a Speaker of the National Assembly, a Chair of the NCOP, and certainly those two houses are equal, but Parliament as a bigger institution sometimes requires overall coordination, and that would be the prime reason for, for creating that overall uh, Speaker of, 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 of Parliament. Also, with regard to the chief whip of the majority party, the, the view of, of conference was that whilst the chief whip is a, a party position, the chief whip also plays a major role in the institution of parliament and that the institution needs to give recognition to that and also provide commensurate uh, resources for the execution of that, of that function. Um, I think maybe just to, to add to what Comrade Parks has said with, in relation to, to the role of members of parliament, I think we, we, we recognize that parliament is playing a very important and dynamic oversight role. Certainly that could be further strengthened. I think there was, there, we adopted a resolution calling on the establishment of, an, of a parliamentary institute that would help with the capacitation of members of parliament. Certainly in relation to SOEs, a conference uh, took the view that um, oversight mechanisms over SOEs must be strengthened and that the ANC in Parliament must take the lead in ensuring that the sector is properly managed and, and monitored. Sure, I'm not sure whether there's anything that... Salga, oh, Salga you, you don't want to be... Uh... <laughs> no, certainly... I, th I think, as, as, as Marianne has correctly pointed out, uh, the Constitution makes provision for organized local government to have 10 seats in the National Council of Provinces. In terms of the Constitution and the Organized Local Government Act, SALGA represents organized local government, so SALGA is already there. Traditional leaders have raised the issue of whether in our intergovernmental relations system, and the, the NCOP is, is, is the, meant to be the voice of provinces and local government in the national uh, legislative process, where there's not some room for the involvement of traditional leaders. As you would know, there is already a national house and provincial houses of traditional leaders that do play uh, that role, that do input, but the request was that we investigate the possibility of some involvement of traditional leaders in the NCOP. That is not a conclusive uh, decision. It is, a, it is a suggestion that needs to be followed uh, up. And the whole idea was that it will be just a participatory without votes for traditional leaders. And for Salga, they are asking for a voting capacity, not just participation. So those are the issues that have been requested. Thank you. It's now 10 minutes to the top of the hour. It gives you enough time to file and cross live for 6 o'clock news. <laughs> we will come back immediately after top of the hour. Thank you very much.